Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Mount Cora United Methodist Church. I'm Mike Noggle, the pastor here, and I'm so glad that you're all joining us here today. And thank you for those of you who are watching us online. Appreciate you uh, checking in on the computer with us, and I hope your time with us this morning is uh, a blessing to you. Um, some announcements I want to share with you. The sheet that had all my announcements and prayer requests uh, accidentally fell out of my folder over at the church office. So I'm either going to get through them really quickly or I'm going to drag on. That's, I'm not sure. Here's your uh, uh, the insert in your bulletin. It uh, has uh, some information about uh, the trunk or treat. Also the uh, care and share craft auction on the 1st of November. The kids uh, project where they're uh, collecting hats and gloves. A uh, hundred of them is their goal by the end of this month. And the other important thing on here, I want you to save the date, is Sunday, October 17th. It is our first Sunday evening contemporary service. Uh, it will be he held here. This one will be held here. Uh, we're going to try this once a month and see how that goes. This is not a repeat of Sunday morning. Uh, the Sunday evening service will be all live contemporary music. We'll have some music musicians, not magicians, musicians here. Uh, and... Uh, and we will also have a testimony and some prayer time, uh, so I think you'll be blessed. But uh, if you uh, are interested, make sure you get that on your calendar. Also, uh, speaking of contemporary music, we have an opportunity. Uh, a friend of mine at the Van Buren United Methodist Church approached me uh, that they have some tickets uh, to the Mercy Me concert, which is on November, um, and it was on my sheet. I think it's, the, uh, it's a Thursday. In, I think it's the first Thursday in November, or the fourth maybe. Uh, it's at Huntington uh, Center up in Toledo. And these tickets uh, are for donation. Uh, if you'd like to make a donation towards it, it'll, it'll offset the cost. Uh, but these have already been paid for. So if you are interested in that, please see me. Uh, I'd be uh, happy to uh, get you signed up for that. Uh, I'm going to go. and. We'll see if we can get a few more to go here from this group. Um, just uh, the, the Women's Care and Share Circle, for those of you who uh, participate in that, uh, that's coming up of uh, October. And uh, I was able to go uh, Saturday morning to the, um, to the uh, presentation of the keys to the two people we helped for the Habitat for Humanity. Uh, the keys were turned over to them for their houses. Those were just started on August 28th. Can you imagine? Two houses built in just over a month. Uh, so that's fantastic. Thank you to all of you who participated in any way with that project. And also thank you for all of those who participated or came or, or did anything to help with the Fall Fest last Sunday afternoon. It was a wonderful time. It was well attended. Uh, we had great weather. Uh, and um, I look forward to doing it again. Uh, but special thanks uh, to Jean and Megan and Tara and Alicia uh, for leading the uh, charge on that. And I know there's a whole bunch of other people that help, uh, but thank you uh, to all of you. Uh, we are going to be having communion today. It is the first Sunday. Uh, Pastor uh, Richard Purvis uh, blessed the elements for us. Uh, and um, so I'm able to serve those for you. It is also our birthday and anniversary uh, month. And I know Don Burgess had a birthday, was it Friday? So a happy birthday to Don. Uh, and I think there was one other on my list and I don't have it here with me. Uh, but how many of you have a birthday or anniversary in October? Ah, so we get to sing to a couple of you. Okay, in TC. So uh, why don't we uh, sing our traditional song? It's going gonna, it's gonna to make you weigh a lot less, did you say? Okay, very good, very good. It's all for a good cause, you know that. Uh, but we, we appreciate that. Are there other announcements uh, that anybody has before we start service today? Megan. Yes, I have two announcements for the youth group 
grades fifth grade and up um, October 17th that Sunday we will not have Sunday school because more than two-thirds of our group will be playing in a soccer tournament and then also for our Sunday fun day the last Sunday of the month or, or the fourth Sunday of the month it's the 24th the 24th thank you um, we will be going to suitors as a group so more information to come but that is it'll probably be longer than 1:30 that day but um, that is the fun and excitement we have for October very good thank you so much Jean. Uh, Tara asked me to give everybody a heartfelt thank you for all the help and donations for Fall Festival. Um, we all appreciate everything that everybody has done to help with that. Thank you, Jean. Any others? If not, Nancy, will you prepare our hearts and minds for worship? Thank you, Nancy. Friends, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who is in every respect, has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace 
to help in time of need. Let us pray. Lord, in this moment, we come to you and we lay our lives before you. May we worship and adore you with every fiber of our being. May everything within us cry, Holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And so today we join with all those who worship and confess you as Lord from generations past and present and with all the angels that sing in heaven of your greatness and beauty. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we love you. Amen. Will you please join me in the singing of our opening hymns, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, on page 89, followed by I Worship You, Almighty God, in the praise book, page 75. We'll sing it through twice. Uh, The words are also found on the screen, and if you are able, uh, feel free to stand and join us in the singing of these songs. i 
You may be seated. We've come to that point in our worship service where we go to the Lord with our praises and our prayers. Uh, I mentioned one earlier, but we certainly, as we're thanking people for the Fall Fest last week, we certainly need to give the Lord praise for the beautiful weather he provided and for the people that we had a chance to witness to and to reach out to, and uh, we just hope that uh, they saw a little bit of God's love uh, through us. Um, Also, this time of year, we need to keep our farmers in our prayers as they're out in the fields trying to get the harvest in, uh, that they remain safe during those times, especially they're traveling back and forth uh, to their homes, that the weather cooperates and that the harvest is bountiful and that the, uh, the equipment works properly all the time and doesn't break down at inappropriate times. Actually, it wasn't the farm equipment, but I had a car that had a bad, bum battery on it this past week. And so I, when the equipment breaks down when you don't expect it to or don't want it to, that can be rather inconvenient. I just kept telling myself it wasn't January or February and snowy and about halfway between here and the other church. But anyway, uh, so remember our farmers. Um, also, uh, I heard from Lori Washer. She asked us to pray for some coworkers uh, last week who had COVID. And the good report uh, for both of them, um, her name was Melanie. I think his was Mark, um, but I don't have that sheet with me. Um, but they are at home and on oxygen, but doing better. Uh, so that's good news. And they obviously need our continued prayer. Uh, I also learned of uh, somebody that many of you may be familiar with, uh, Judy Hodeschel. Uh, She was a, she graduated from Corey Rawson schools in the early 50s. Uh, She was a Benro, um, Judy Benro as her maiden name. Uh, I knew her best because she served for um, nearly 40 years as the uh, deputy chief clerk at the probate court uh, in Hancock County and uh, she's Uh, Her and her family lived over in the Arlington area, but she passed away uh, the other day, and so we need to keep uh, Judy's um, family in our prayers this morning. Are there others that we need to share? Megan. An update from last week. Um, I have found out that I have a lot more customers in Hardin County that have been in and out of the hospital, some of them still in. Um, And one friend, um, Kelly, or Buck, Buck and Roth, um, he is still in ICU. He's been in a paralytic state most of the week. And uh, the last couple days here, they have started to take him back out of that. And he is responding fairly well. He can track the nurses as they walk through his room and he can nod and squeeze their hands. So hopefully he will be off the ventilator here um, early this week or, you know, whenever is appropriate, but hopefully he'll be off that soon and continue to make um, good improvements. Very good. And his name is Kelly? Yeah, just Buck. Buck, okay. (laughs) Are there others? TC has one over here, Gary. Oh, I have a praise. My youngest son got married yesterday. Congratulations. And, yeah, it, it was really neat. Um, it was in a kind of outdoor venue, and it quit raining long enough to have it. So, And I went traveling, uh, prayers for traveling mercies for them. They're going to Tennessee on their, on their honeymoon. Very good. And I told them they're getting a cabin. I guess it's part of a, a group cabin out in the out in the woods. And I told them, if you hear banjos in the evening, lock your door. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my lady friend's best girlfriend, uh, father Jerry Joseph, is uh, fighting bladder cancer, and now he's uh, yeah, coming down with dementia. We'll remember them both. And what's your son and daughter-in-law's name? Jansen and Samantha. Jansen and Samantha. 
Yeah, I have a little experience with kids getting married recently myself. So <laughs> it is a blessing. Are there others? Stella has one back here. Oh, Harold, okay, we'll start with you. I have an unspoken praise and an unspoken request. Very good. Um, I just want to hope that everyone heals before um, our soccer tournament starts. So, yeah. It's that time of the season where people have their bumps and bruises, isn't it? Yes, well, and you among them, as I understand. So, <laughs> I won't say, I won't say, but, but we, we certainly hope that uh, everybody stays safe and has a wonderful time. I know we have uh, quite a few of our kids in that tournament uh, that second weekend of uh, uh, October, that uh, 16th and 17th, whatever that is. Uh, so, uh, and I'll try and get down there, it just won't be till after church, okay? So. <laughs> Any others? All right, will you join me in our prayer hymn uh, today? Uh, it can be found on page 451, Be Thou My Vision. The words are also on the screen. You may remain seated while you sing this song. O loving and merciful Heavenly Father, we feel your presence here this morning as we draw near to you. Lord, we thank you for your love and your care for each one of us. It's hard to comprehend that the maker of the universe would care that much for each of us, but we know that you do. We know you have a plan for this church, and we know that you have a plan for each of our lives. And Lord, we just ask for your guidance and your wisdom that we can follow through on that plan and be obedient to your will. We also know that you are a God who is everywhere and knows everything, has created all, and knows our thoughts even before we're able to articulate them or have them pass through our lips. 
and you hear them and you care. And Lord, we know that when we give you thanks for the beautiful weather and the number of people that came to Fall Fest last week, we know that you hear us. We just ask that Holy Spirit touch each of the persons who was who that seed may have been planted that day. That you and only you can make grow. Lord, we thank you for the blessings that you've given us for fertile ground and the the ability to farm and raise crops this time of year especially as the harvest comes in. We thank you for our farmers. We ask you to put a hedge of protection around each of them, keep them safe as they go in and out of the fields and while they are bringing in the harvest. Let it be bountiful. Let the weather cooperate. Let the equipment work properly. And we'll give you all the praise and glory for all that you've given us. Lord, we know when we come to you with prayers and concerns, we know that you hear them and you've started healing in the lives of Mark and Melanie, the co-workers of Lori, and we thank you for that. We also know that there are other people that need your healing touch, like Buck and Jerry. We also ask for your healing touch on all the youth who participate in the soccer league. Heal them where they are hurt. Keep them safe where they are not. Lord, we thank you for the gift of marriage. We thank you for the new life that is before Jansen and Samantha. We ask you to bless their time together here on earth. Keep them safe as they travel back and forth from Tennessee. And bless their union. And may it be a long, healthy, and happy one that's focused on you. Lord, we also ask for prayers for the family of Judy Hadashel. Lord, it's always difficult when we have to say goodbye to somebody that's been a part of our lives for so long. But we also know that you have her in your tender, loving care. So give her family and friends the peace and assurance of your presence and of your love for her and love for them that they can know that she is just fine. And as long as they stay follower of you, that they will be as well. Or there are many unspoken requests and praises that are on the hearts of those who are in the sanctuary and those who are watching online, and we take a moment to live, lift them up to you now. Lord, we thank you for the provision that you have given us we know that everything that we have comes from you and the small token that we put in the offering basket or the birthday and anniversary collection box here in the front of the sanctuary is a small token of what you've given us and we give it gladly. We ask that you bless it and give us the wisdom to use it in a way that's pleasing to you. And finally, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus. The sacrifice that he made on our behalf, which we are commemorating this morning, is nothing short of miraculous. And if that is not an expression of love, 
I don't know what is. Lord, it is in the name of that Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's time for our children's moment. Do we have any coming forward? Or we go, you got to come, come on forward. You can just sit in the front row. You don't have to st- sit and face everybody. I don't want to make it too painful for you. Oh, good morning, girls. It's good to see you again. We're going to be talking this morning about a fellow who, a group of people, actually, who saw something that somebody else had, and they wanted it for themselves. And, you know, as kids, we oftentimes fall into that trap, don't we? That, you know, we see that somebody has a nice book bag, or they have nice clothes, or they have this or that. And we sometimes want it for ourselves. We'd like to think our lives would be so much better if we had this, that, or the other thing. Well, I got news for you. See all those older people out there behind you? They have the same problem. We do. Because we see things that other people have and think, oh, it'd be nice to have that. Oh, wouldn't it be? Our lives would be so much better if we just had what somebody else had so that we could fit in and we could look like them. Well, God made us unique. If you looked at each other and looked around this room, there's not a single person in here that looks exactly alike. All of us know who each other are because we can see the differences in their faces. God made us special. He made us to stand out. And while it's very easy to want to be just like everybody else and fit in, sometimes God asks us, to stand up for him. And sometimes we don't fit in when we do that. And sometimes people make fun of us when we do. And, but that's all right. Because God loves you the way you are. You don't have to have anything else. It's all right to appreciate what other people have. Not to saying you shouldn't try and get some things for yourself if you have the ability. But don't center your worth on what that is because you are worth more just as you are right now, today, in God's eyes than you can ever, ever be by gaining something else. You are already priceless. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love and we thank you for making us the way that you have. Give us the confidence and the assurance to know that we can be ourselves and you will love us and that you will be with us as we face the challenges of being like everybody else. Because we know that as followers of you, you love us just as we are. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, girls. Scripture reading comes today from uh, several passages from the first book of Samuel, chapters 8, 9, 10, 11, 13. When Samuel grew old, he appointed his sons as Israel's leaders. But his sons did not follow his ways. They turned aside after dishonest gain and accepted bribes and perverted justice. So all the elders of Israel gathered together and came came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, You lead us, such as all the other nations have. But when they said, Give us the Lord, when they said, Give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel, so he prayed to the Lord. And the Lord told him, 
Listen to all the people, what they are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. As they have done from the day I brought them up out of Egypt until this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so they are doing to you. Now listen to them, but warn, warn them solemnly, and let them know what the king who will reign over them will claim as his rights. Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. But the people refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said, we want a king over us. Then we will be like all the other nations with a king to lead us and go out before us and fight our battles. When Samuel heard all that the people said, he repeated it before the Lord. The Lord answered, listen to them and give them a king. There was a Benjaminite, Benjaminite, a man of standing whose name was Kish. Kish had a son named Saul, as handsome a young man as could be found anywhere in Israel. And he was a head taller than anyone else. Now the day before Saul came, the Lord revealed this to Samuel. About this time tomorrow, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. Anoint him ruler over my people Israel. He will deliver them from the hand of the Philistines. I have looked on my people, for their cry has reached me. When Samuel caught sight of Saul, the Lord said to him, This is the man I spoke to you about. He will govern my people. Then Samuel came, or Samuel took a flask of olive oil and poured it on Saul's head and kissed him, saying, Has not the Lord anointed you the ruler over his inheritance? Then Samuel said to the people, Come, let us go to Gilgal, and there renew the kingship. So all the people went to Gilgal, made Saul king in the presence of the Lord. There they sacrificed fellowship offerings before the Lord, and Saul and all the Israelites held a great celebration. Saul was 32 years old when he became king and reigned, for, and reigned over Israel for 42 years. Thank you, John, and may God bless the reading of his holy word this morning. Just a couple other things before I get into the message. If you have certain prayer requests that you do not want to share openly here in the church but want to share with us uh, in the office, uh, just fill out one of these yellow uh, welcome cards in your pews and put it in the offering basket and we'll get those. And if you have an update of your email, uh, phone number, address, uh, you can do that on there too. Also, um, the Women's Emmaus Walk, the Spiritual Retreat Weekend, uh, for women is coming up uh, this, it starts this Thursday through this coming Sunday. And it, it, while it's too late to get registered uh, for this walk, uh, the next women's walk will be in February. But there is a men's uh, walk coming up on November 11th through the 14th. And if any of you have any interest in that or would like more information about it, uh, please see me. I think you'll be greatly enriched by that weekend. Um, I think um, for most people who have attended it, they would uh, readily tell you that they have been touched by the love of God through their experience in that weekend uh, like they'd never had before, and we certainly would love to share that with you. Uh, will you uh, join me in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our Lord, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Uh, when was the last time any of you looked at your junior high or high school pictures and looked at what you were wearing, how you fixed your hair, what car you were driving, what kind of things you had, and looked around? And sometimes you look at those pictures, and say, what was I thinking? It's horrible. And we have that experience, but back then when we had those platform shoes and leisure suits and everything else that we were as a fad at one time, or tie-dye shirts or poodle skirts or whatever they happened to be, saddle shoes. Yes, of course. You look at those and, and you think, but back then we thought that was really, that was really the thing because we fit in like everybody else and everybody look at us and all right. 
And then you see some of that start coming back again. I just learned that the mullet is coming back. And I, th I thought we had gotten rid of that one for good, uh, but it's coming up. Well, they'll, about 15, 20 years from now, they'll look at their pictures today and they'll think, what was I thinking, and, and move on. But we have that. We have this natural desire to conform, to want to be like other people, to have what other people have. It almost goes to extremes. You see it at prom time and homecoming time when, you know, the, some parents go overboard about trying to make sure their kid has everything all the other kids have and uh, limos and fancy clothes and, and big uh, meals and everything else. And uh, it, it gets out of hand sometimes all out of an effort to conform and be like others. Well, we fall prey to that as adults, and the Israelite people fell prey to that too. In our story, they've come out of Egypt. They've been forced to wander in the wilderness because of their disobedience. And last week we talked that they had finally been able and given permission to enter into the Promised Land and enter into Canaan. And during the next 300 years, they would be ruled uh, with God at the center in the tabernacle and priests who would be able to go in at certain times at certain places and judges who would guide and direct them. But God would be the center and God would be his people, would be with his people, and he would be, they would be his and they would be in his place and he would be their king. Of course, just like politicians and rulers of today. We have good ones and we have bad ones and we have others in between. And certainly there were major distortions to what God's plan was. And there are three major distortions that took place, distortions of God's purpose. And the first one is the distortion of phoniness. See, a lot of these religious leaders, Eli was one of them. He was a priest at Shiloh. And he had a couple of sons, but they abused the sacrificial system. They committed sexual and moral acts. They did all kinds of things that were against God's word and against uh, God's teachings. And, but Eli refused to reprimand his sons, and God judged them all with death. And the Ark of the Covenant was stolen from Shiloh. See, oftentimes... People put on this position or this air of importance, and other people see it, and they look at it from an outward sign. Say, you know, they have it all together. Look at them. They have looks. They have money. They have cars. They have clothes. Whatever they have that you don't have, and the tendency is to look at them and say that they have more worth than we do because of that. But I'm told you cannot judge yourself against the outside of another person until you know what's inside. You cannot judge yourself against the outside of another person until you know what's inside. Because you don't know what's in there. You don't know what they've been through. You don't know what messed up life they may have. But because of their position, you may put them up. Pastors have a particular struggle with this, too. Because people look at a pastor, oh, well, they're something special. They're higher than we are. They know the Bible more. They pray more. They uh, study more. They don't do anything that's not ungodly or uh, unpleasing to God and all that. Um, no, <laughs> that's not true at all. We have the same struggles as anybody else, but that's the problem because some, oftentimes we steal joy from ourselves because of comparison. We compare each other, and compared to each other, we always look at ourselves as coming up somehow short. That's not what God wants for you. See, when we go out and, and talk about our faith. God wants it to be an authentic faith, not a phony one. Not that we just come to church and put on our good clothes and we act really nice here, and then for the other six and a half days of the week, we do whatever we want. 
against God's will. See, I believe God values authenticity. Jesus and his disciples, he picked broken people. The Pharisees, the religious people, he chastised them. He said, you are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but in the inside are full of bones of the dead and everything unclean. We know when we see phoniness, don't we? Or we think we do. Be careful when you are putting on your faith that what you are expressing is your authentic faith, both your strengths and your failures and your weaknesses. Because God wants authenticity more than anything else. The second distortion of God's plan was the distortion of conformity. And there's a great story. I can't get into all the stories. I hope you're keeping up in some of the other readings because there's so much more in there that I'm able to cover on a Sunday morning. It's a beautiful story of Hannah, who uh, was another woman in the Bible who was having trouble having children, and she prays to God, and God grants her requests, and she gives birth to a son by the name of Samuel, who she dedicates to the work of the Lord, and he grows up in the house of Eli and becomes uh, one of the leaders. And later on, as he is the leader, he has a couple of sons himself, and they aren't following his ways and following God's ways. And the people get concerned, and they come to him and say, we can't, you, you can't have them follow you in this. It'll be a disaster. Well, I give them credit for one thing. They have the diagnosis right. Their prescription is wrong. They say, the re what we're going to do, because you are not going to have them, we can't have them lead, is we need you to anoint a king over us. Give us a king. How can we a nation we don't have a king? All these other nations around us have kings, and we don't have a king. We want a king. Of course, Samuel thinks... It's a rejection of him, and he talks to God about it, and God says, well, wait a second, they are rejecting you. They're rejecting me. I'm their king. But be careful what you ask of God, because sometimes he'll give it to you, and he'll watch you face the consequences of your request. And that happened here. See, don't aim to be like anyone else. God's people are to be distinct. We're not called to be like other people. We're unique. I know it's, we like fitting in. We like belonging. It's a natural thing. But Romans 12, 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Each day, each week, you're going to be faced, and we all are faced, with a choice between what is socially acceptable and what is morally right. What are you doing to prepare yourself to stand with God? Consulting the Bible, you're with him in prayer, you're asking him for guidance. See, we live in a very confusing world, especially for those of us who have been around for any length of time. The things that used to be right are now suddenly deemed as wrong, and the things that used to be respectable are now ridiculed. It's like the world's tossed upside down. So we have a choice. We may not be able to change everything, but we can make a choice of how we're going to respond ourselves. Are we going to conform, or are we going to stand out? That's why lone wolf Christianity is so vulnerable. We can't do it alone. We need the support and assistance of each other to get through this world. And the final distortion that I want to share with you that went through this was the distortion of misrepresentation. See, God gave them their wish. They gave them a king. They found a guy, tall, dark, and handsome, you might say, he looked kingly, presidential, somebody that everybody would look up to. 
And it started off pretty well because God's hand anointed him. He put his spirit in him uh, to follow. And as long as Saul followed what God asked him to do, everything worked out all right. But then God gave him certain instructions of what he was supposed to do and not do. And Saul decided he thought he knew better and made excuses as to why he didn't follow God's commands. And God's blessing came off of him. And we'll see over the next few weeks how that then transferred to David and Solomon and others. But see, God's ultimate purpose will not be defeated because despite the fact that he was willing to give them what they wanted and suffer the consequences of it, his overall plan would not be defeated. His overall plan, remember, is to be with his people in his place and the king of them all. He would be their God and they would be his people. And ultimately is through the lineage of King David that brings us the son, Jesus Christ, who we celebrate today. We too are representatives of God in the world. What upset God so much about Saul and the Hebrew people is that he was trying to reach out to the other people in the world to say, hey, look, Because I bless them, I can bless you too. That's what he wants of us. But when we disobey God, we distort God to the world. And they see something that is not. What kind of a representative are you? Mahatma Gandhi, the Indian uh, leader, once said, I like your Christ. I don't like your Christians. They're so unlike your Christ. Ouch. That hurts because it's painfully true. And especially in this day and age when there's so much stress in the society and there's so much anger and angst and lack of civility, Lack of basic manners anymore, it seems. What are we projecting through our actions, through our interactions with other people, with our family, with our friends, on social media? We are meant to be God's people, living authentically in God's place, surrounded by those who refuse to conform with the world and with God as our king representing him in a way that brings him pride to say that this is my beloved in whom whom I am well pleased. So please remember, as you interact, make sure your representation is an accurate one of the one that you are following. And when God said this is My beloved, who I am well pleased, there was none other that he was more well pleased and loved more than Jesus Christ. And he sent Jesus Christ because the Israelite people and all of us, time and time and time again, don't get it right. We may try, even the best of us, and we screw up. And so God needed to find a way that we could be made righteous in his sight because God cannot have unrighteousness in his presence. So he sent Jesus Christ, his one and only son, the perfect lamb, to be sacrificed for our sake. And it's that sacrifice that gives us the right to stand before him, our Lord in heaven, one day. And when... Jesus was on earth, and he was preparing to make that sacrifice. In fact, the night before he was betrayed, he was in the upper room with his disciples, and he was sharing with them the Seder meal, commemorating the time when the angel of death passed over them and led them out of Egypt. And in the middle of the meal, he took the bread and he held it up and he 
blessed it and thanked his father for it. And then he broke it. He said, this is my body broken for you as oft as you eat of it. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, at the end of the meal, he took the cup. Once again, he blessed it and thanked his father for it. And he said something really strange. He said, friends, this is my blood. Blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As oft as you drink of this. Do this in remembrance of me. Will you pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you loved us that much, that you were willing to pay that price for us. And we thank you for the gift of the bread and the fruit of the vine that we can commemorate and remember the sacrifice that was made on our behalf. Lord, we just ask that this bread and this juice be transformed and be made to us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we may be refreshed and renewed, and that we can share the good news of your son's love and sacrifice to all those who we come in contact with. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. In the United Methodist Church, we celebrate what's called an open table, which means that anyone can partake of communion. You do not have to be a member of this church. You do not have to be a member of any church. You just have to come with an open heart, willing to seek God and accept the sacrifice that Jesus has made on your behalf. So as you come forward today, come down the aisle, take a cup that has the bread. You can come here. I will have you eat the bread, and then I'll pour juice in your cup, and then there's a trash can here you can put it in. But the table is set, my friends. Come and eat. The body of Christ, broken for you, take and eat. Blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. The body of Christ, broken for you, take and eat. Blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. The body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. The body of Christ broken for you, take and eat. Blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. The body of Christ broken for you, take and eat. Blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. Body of Christ broken for you, take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you, 
partake and drink. Body of Christ broken for you, take and eat. Blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. The body of Christ broken for you, take and eat. Blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. The body of Christ broken for you, take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. Christ broken for you, take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. I'm glad you got a study hand out short on that. Body of Christ broken for you, take and eat. Blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. Body of Christ broken for you, take and eat. Blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. Christ broken for you, take and eat. Blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. You can come together. The body of Christ broken for you, take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you. broken for you, take and eat. Blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. Body of Christ broken for you, take and eat. Blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. Body of Christ broken for you, take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. Christ broken for you, take and eat. broken for you now. Take and eat. Go ahead and eat. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this gift. Help us take it with us as we leave this building today, restored, renewed, refreshed, and reinvigorated, knowing that your love for us is that great, and it's a message that we need to share with everyone we come in contact with. In your precious name we pray. Amen. As we close the service today, will you join with me in our closing hymn, which is sent forth by God's blessing, which you can find on page 664 in your hymnal or on the screen. And you may stand, if you are able, as we sing this closing hymn. Now until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.